Have you ever stopped to think that maybe, just maybe, we might be locked into a real life story here? A story of love, life, death, and transformation. It's a story about overcoming. It's a story about becoming real. And whether you believe it or not, you're the main character in that story right now. The story about the Velveteen Rabbit is it about a rabbit that's a toy and he is a stuffed toy that is given to a young boy as a Christmas present. The boy is given a whole bunch of other toys, pretty much like Toy Story with uh, Woody and Buzz. He's given a bunch of other toys that are newer, more, mechani more mechanical, sharper, uh, brighter colors and so on. So the rabbit's left alone a lot of the time and he's neglected eventually by the boy left in a corner, as toys like that could be. So the wisest and oldest toy in the nursery is uh, a character called the Skin Horse. And he befriends the rabbit and really helps him through one of the most difficult times of his life. So the Skin Horse explains to him that when a child really, really loves you and he starts to believe that you're real, this magical thing happens and you turn into a real rabbit. So the Velveteen Rabbit is in awe um, by this idea, loves the idea and um, keeps asking for more and more information about how he can become real. And so the idea of transformation starts to unfold beautifully in the story. So one night the boy is sleeping and his grandmother comes in and takes some of the newer toys away and comforts him while he's sleeping with the Velveteen Rabbit. The boy wakes up, befriending the rabbit even more, and he regards the rabbit as real from the get-go, taking him on picnics with him into the forests and so on, and really starting to love the rabbit, a relationship develops here. But one day, as stories go, the boy gets sick. He comes down with scarlet fever. So the doctor comes in and orders that all his toys be destroyed. They be burnt the next day. So the rabbit is taken away from the boy. The boy is moved off to the house at the coast to recover. And while he does this, the rabbit's put in a corner. The rabbit becomes incredibly upset, sad. He's now old, weary. He's lost a lot of fur, a um, little bit worse for wear. And he eventually ends up crying in the corner because he's been left um, overwhelmed by the situation um, as it's unfolded. So he sits crying in the corner and as one of his tears of the Velveteen Rabbit hit the floor, up comes a fairy. So the fairy leads the boy into the forests and in the forest he meets a bunch of other rabbits. <clears throat> and these rabbits mock and laugh at him at first. But then the fairy wishes her wand and bang, he turns into a real rabbit, bounding and bouncing along with the rest of them. And so the story goes that the boy comes back the next spring, obviously recovered from his scarlet fever, walks into the forest, sees the Velveteen Rabbit and recognizes the real rabbit as his friend, which was just that toy. So that is the story. And what it's really talking about is deep transformation from something that's not real into something that's real. So the wise skin horse is always comforting uh, the Velveteen Rabbit who is often neglected, sitting in a corner. And one day, he, uh, the rabbit asks him, what is real? What is real? And the skin horse, as wise as he is, replies, real isn't how you are made. It is a thing that happens to you. And so the rabbit keeps asking questions about this transformation into real. Does it hurt, he asks. And the skin horse says, yes, it does hurt, but only a little bit at a time. And when you know you're becoming real, you don't mind the hurt so much. It's part of the journey. So I think that part of the story reminds us that, you know, when we're in the depths of struggle uh, and hurt and pain and despair, um, and we keep our eyes on what's really happening, we can get through it a lot easier. Um, than we could if we had no belief. And I think, I always say the two things needed in life are effort 
and faith. You have to work it. That's half the story. But then you really have to believe as well. So the skin horse goes on to explain, you know, it's a process. It's becoming real. It takes time. And he says, by the time you're real, a lot of your fur will have rubbed off and you might be a little less attractive and more dirty and worse for wear than you were in the beginning. But he says it doesn't matter because there is no such thing as ugly to a real person. When you love by someone, you cannot be ugly. And so the rabbit longed to be loved by the boy. He longed for the process to happen, even though he knew he would lose a few whiskers here and there and lose some fur. He still wanted to go through the process to become a real rabbit. So the skin horse says, this process doesn't happen to toys that are, have sharp edges, that are pristine, that break easily. This process rather happens to the enduring kind of toy. Like him, stuffed full of sawdust, he can weather the storms uh, that the process of life is going to bring him. So the rabbit longed to be real. He longed to um, get into the process. And even if that meant losing some whiskers and some fur, he was still willing to go ahead and do it. And that's the effort um, that his faith was bringing him in his life. I think what the story really is telling us is that I think we need to stop and wonder if we are perhaps the main characters in this remarkable story that we call life. The story about life includes literally everything. It includes love, life, pain, shame, joy, bliss, delight, and everything else in between. You know, there's very little that it doesn't include. And that's the connection that I think that we need to develop with ourselves first. You need to connect the various parts of yourself, physical to emotional, emotion to psychological, psychological to spiritual. Um, and once we start developing that connection properly with ourselves, we will then be able, uh, and we call this mirror work, be able to reflect outwards um, what we have now experienced onto other people. And any journey worth a damn, in fact, any story worth a damn, is where people are going on a hero's journey and getting enough energy, power, which obviously means action to do what's necessary, to be able to help other people and be part of a bigger picture. So like the skin horse was helping rabbit, you're going to need people to help you. And in turn, one day that will be reversed and you'll find yourself hopefully in a position where you have learned enough, earned enough, yearned enough to be able to sit and spend your time and your energy helping other people, just like the skin horse and the fairy did and the grandmother did. Once you wake up, you can never go back. You can never go back from a spiritual journey to being unreal again. You can never wake up, which is good news, and fall back asleep again. This is the story of the journey. We will have our ups and downs, but you can never go back. You are always like a clock going one way around this journey of life. And that's good news. When someone else loves you for who you truly are, then you become real. So transformation is not a solo event. It's something that you do through connection. You know, we all need a skin horse. We all need a way through the dark night of the soul. And it's made much, much easier when you have a skin horse of your own, when you connect it. You can't do this journey solo. And I think the story also teaches us that dreams come with risk. The rabbit invests everything he can, although he's seeing neglect, although he finds himself in a corner and he sees that 
the boy loves the other toys, the newer toys, much more than him. And in a way, he's conscious that he's becoming perhaps older, uglier, and less attractive. He still has a belief in the magic of the process of becoming real. So you become more in life, always. You don't become less. And I think the looks can show that you're becoming less, but you become more in life, not less. That is one of the greatest paradoxes that you've really got to get your mind around, is that this is a process of becoming, as the skin horse explained, it's a process of awakening to far, far more than the stuffing, the light stuffing that was inside before. There's more to the picture. There always is. Living from your authentic self is a work of beauty. It's a process of passion that is far more miraculous than anything else we will ever experience in this lifetime. So we really, really need to trust the process of life a lot more than we do. It doesn't happen all at once, said the skin horse. You become. It takes a long time. That's why it doesn't happen often to people who break easily or have sharp edges or have to be carefully kept. Generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off and your eyes drop out and you get loose in the joints and very shabby. But these things don't matter at all because once you are real, you cannot be ugly except to the people who don't understand. Marjorie Williams' story about the Velveteen Rabbit is a beautiful story that each one of us are going to have to endure. Whether we know it or not, whether we're aware of it or not, it is something that is being done. And life is a process, whether we like it or not, that is happening to us and for us. Even though it looks like it's ugly, painful, sometimes we must never forget that a paradigm shift is coming. A paradigm shift is what I call turning the corner. And people who commit suicide and stay stuck in depression or some kind of addiction or anything that holds them back for too long are not aware, as the rabbit wasn't in the beginning, are not aware that there's a corner to turn and then things become beautiful. It is a good world and we need to realize that. So does it hurt? Yes, it does. Sometimes it does, but it hurts little by little, not all at once. Real isn't how you're made. It's something that happens to you. And that is the story of the Velveteen Rabbit.